Story 1. Getting punched in the shoulder every single day on the way home from school. No one could do anything about it because it wasn't on school grounds. There was a two-year period during middle school when I had a perpetual bruise on my upper arm, except on summer vacations. I finally put an end to it by leaving a piece of cardboard filled with thumbtacks outside for a week so they rusted and duct taped it under my sleeve. The kid punched me one more time and got a grit of puncture wounds on his fist. He didn't tell anyone. That's brilliant. Though, now you could probably get in trouble for it, like the people who fill their mailboxes with bricks because they're tired of other people destroying it while playing mailbox baseball. Story 2. I had a coach in high school always screaming about something. He never seemed to like me, even though I tried my hardest in sports. I wasn't very good. I did get good grades and was in my first year of college. I had to stop by the high school to pick up a transcript, walk by his classroom on the way to the office. He stops lecturing the class and comes out in the hallway to berate me for wearing a hat in the school. I took my hat off, adjusted the bill, looked him in the eye, put it back on, and walked away. He followed me to the office, grumbling about how I had a lesson to learn, and he was going to show me. Principal comes out of his office to see what all the yelling is about. I still haven't said a word. He starts retelling the story to the principal. I turn to the secretary and ask for my transcript, reminding her I called earlier. She hands it over. I turn to the principal and ask him if all guests in the school were treated like this. I think he forgot I wasn't a student anymore. I always wish I would have told him off and created a big scene, but I just left. Story 3. On Frog Dissection Day, I was partnered with this really nerdy, cute girl. This is an important detail because it provides some semblance of an excuse for just how stupid I was. As we're cutting up this little frog, she looks at me and says, Dare you to eat a leg? She could have dared me to swallow the frog whole and I probably would have obliged. So down goes the leg. Unfortunately, it doesn't go down all the way. The webbed foot gets stuck in my mouth and the dangly leg bit is down my throat. I, of course, start gagging and the teacher runs over. Kids are squealing, and everyone watches as I reach into my mouth and pull out this sad little frog leg. The girl is in shock. The teacher is in shock. I'm in shock. The only person who makes a comment is this quiet mousy kid who sums it up with, Ew. So, yeah. Dissection was a pretty good time. Story 4. Back in the day, before classes began for the day, elementary age kids were allowed to play outside on the playground. There I was, playing in the big mass soccer game, when I legitimately stole the soccer ball from an older kid. He got mad at this. He tackled me and started pummeling my face. My face became a bloody mess, and I was in a daze. When my mother was called in, she spoke to the vice principal about what would be done with the other boy. His response was, Boys will be boys. And nothing was done. That was the tipping point for my parents sending me to private school. That, and the Florida school system was one of the worst in the country. Story 5. So, my school had this automated phone system that was used mainly for bad weather. I live in the south, so tornadoes occurred often, so it was a pretty effective system. This same system was used to inform parents that their child was failing a class or school in general. My principal accidentally sent that message to every kid's parents in the entire school system. I was raised by my grandmother and grew up with very good grades, and when I walked into my house after school, the first thing she said was, Wanna tell me something? I started crying instantly, still pretty young, and confessed that it was me that broke the headlights of her car and not my friend who lived next door. Thanks, public school. Story 6 we had a substitute growing up who would shamelessly fill in for any class, whether it was orchestra, PE, computer science, or preschool. One girl asked, how can you master so many subjects? He answered, I just fake it. No one knows what they're doing anyways. It was then that I realized adults were a bunch of phonies for the first time. Story 7. When I almost got expelled because the principal allowed my home issues to be a reason for expulsion. I struggled with depression, a lot, so I basically just said f it, I fail. I was spending a lot of time reading when I shouldn't have and talking to people online. My mom came to school one day pissed and opened my locker to try and find my missing homework. 
Hint, there was none. I just f***ing hated school. So she's going through my stuff, and I notice a binder that has some private stuff, thoughts, online accounts, etc. Basically my journal. So I tried, and failed, to hide it from her. Well, it didn't work, and she threw a fit that I wouldn't give it to her. So she took me to the principal, who then decided to tell me either I give her the binder or get expelled. So I was ready to accept expulsion, but I wouldn't leave with my mom. So they then threw in the cops. That's right, they were going to call the cops on me and charge me with trespassing. I was 13 or 14, so I caved. I gave the binder to my mom, and when I got home, she had read it. And my life was over. Story 8. One of my tentacles twisted around in my sleep, cutting off all blood circulation. It died off, and I had to have it removed. Instead of telling the class I was sick and would be back in two to three weeks, the teacher instead told the class I had to have my nut removed. Until the next big thing happened at school, that year was not fun. At all. Story 9. I got teased a lot, but still always tried to fit in with the cool kids. One day, I wanted to show off my new outfit that I felt super confident in. So I walked up to the kids and tried to just hang out, but they were not having it. So they knocked me to the ground, ripped off my skirt, and threw it in a tree. Obviously super mortified standing there in my undies, I took off and ran home to change. When I showed up back at school, I was pulled into the principal's office and was suspended for leaving school. When I tried to explain what happened, I was told I shouldn't have tried to hang around people who didn't like me. Story 10. One time I pissed my pants in front of my entire class while on a field trip. One time I threw up through my nose in the middle of math class. One time I fell asleep and was snoring so loud that the teacher took a picture of me and sent it to my dad, who also taught at the school. However, easily the most embarrassing thing to happen to me in school was my first and second field days in elementary school. We had this horrible woman as a teacher who treated the whole class as some sort of Olympic level event. We were in the third grade, and she'd berate us for not being good enough. I wasn't great at the balance beam, and it was something she'd yell at me for. That sort of thing. Anyways, our field day was traditional track and field events. They'd build it up to be this fun thing, and then march us all down as a bunch of eight-year-olds to run a mile, run various dashes, long jump, high jump, etc. In contrast, my youngest brother's field day included a bounce house. Lucky bastard. Everybody got a ribbon for each event they competed in, and were required to wear them pinned to their shirts. Blue for first, red for second, white for third, and a rainbow ribbon for all other places. My most embarrassing moment in public school was the two days I spent walking around, adorned entirely in rainbow ribbons. It's not bad enough I sucked at P.E. No, everyone else had to know it too. The third year I was at that school, my mom kept me home on field day and took me to lunch. Not as good for my physical health, but much better for my mental health. Story 11. I was picked on a lot in school, especially elementary school before I moved states. I wasn't popular, but I did have a few close friends. Only one of those friends was in my actual classroom, though. Even the teacher seemed to dislike me. I realized just last year that I have ADD, which explains a lot of my learning difficulties growing up. By no means was I a dumb kid, but it certainly was harder to teach me than it was others. One day, one of the really popular kids is going around the room and giving out invites to his birthday party. He's doing it very publicly, very loudly, and everybody sees him. He's announcing details about the party, the location, etc., and he's giving everyone except me and my friend and a couple of other kids invites. He's done passing out invitations and then sits back down. The teacher stands up and then proceeds to ask why he didn't invite everyone, especially if he was going to do it publicly, and he responded, Well, I don't really know everyone in this class. So the teacher proceeds to bring out her own invitations to his party that she gives to all the other kids who didn't get invited to his party. That meant me and my friend and maybe one or two other unpopular kids got invites from the teacher to attend this kid's birthday party. The teacher and the kid go back and forth for a little while about how she can't do that and how he shouldn't be so rude to others, etc. I don't even remember that conversation to be honest. I just remember feeling very apathetic.
I remember very vividly thinking, who the hell cares? I don't like any of these people going to this party because they've bullied me for years. I don't want to go to his party. And while the teacher had a good point about how he was inviting people rather obnoxiously and publicly, it wasn't really her place to decide who got to go to his party. I didn't want to go to a party where I wasn't invited. I wouldn't be welcomed anyway. I'd much rather stay at home and just play my video games or watch cartoons. Looking back on it, that one very strong feeling of apathy was probably one of the earliest signs of my oncoming battle with major depressive disorder. Story 12. This memory was a little traumatic for a little me. One of the teachers at the school had died in a drunk driving incident. In the third grade, I remember that one day the principal walked into our class to tell us that said teacher had moved on with her life and she was doing better things now. I remember being really happy for that teacher. She wasn't my teacher at the time, but I had known her because she was really friendly. I went home that day and asked my parents if I could somehow get in touch with her and ask her how she was, maybe with a letter or email. My parents decided to straight up tell me she was dead. The severity of the situation didn't really hit me until my dog died a year later, and I found out that death meant I wouldn't be able to see whoever died again. Story 13. I got sent home in primary school because I was wearing brand name sneakers. Apparently, wearing brands made the poor kids feel bad about themselves. Except my mom bought them from the local op shop and they were dirt cheap, like $10. This was a regular occurrence for my school, which defeats the purpose of an education. Luckily, I moved to private school the following year and got sent home for wearing my summer socks during the winter semester because at 7 a.m., the difference between tan and gray is not much. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Story 14. For my senior year of English, I got the teacher everyone referred to as a bitch. Class starts, and she seems pretty nice. I was known between English teachers in my small high school due to being a writer and local slam poet. I was also in the midst of my cutesy goth phase and was easily identifiable, so they just kind of liked me from the start. Mrs. Walker, name may be changed, maybe not, was a radical Christian. Every story we read had Christian undertones to her, even things like Greek writing about Olympus, the Odyssey, and Beowulf. She'd find a way to tie in the Bible and Jesus' perils at least once per lesson, and as the year wore on, she started behaving oddly towards the only black student in the class. She started off by ignoring him, and then eventually progressed to asking him questions she knew he wouldn't know, and outright mocked him and allowed others to mock him too. He was a sweet guy, and mentally a little slow, but had never done anything to her. She just didn't like him. Yay, racist South! Soon thereafter, we got to pick our groups for a major assignment that would run the entire year. She tried to talk me into joining a group with two jockey guys and another writer, probably so the other girl and I would carry her two male favorites. We were the female favorites. I said no thanks, and moved into a group with my best friend, a guy we were friends with, the black kid, and a stereotypical high school lesbian. War rainbow everything, made out with girls to seem edgy, etc. I am bisexual, and was very in the closet at that time, and when she found out, she decided we were besties and added herself to the group. Mrs. Walker seemed a little put off, but didn't fuss too much. Just told me if I wanted to swap, I was welcome to at any point. One day, during group work, my best friend cracked a lame joke, something like, a Mormon, her, a lesbian, obviously the lesbian in the group, a Catholic, the guy friend, a black guy and an atheist, it's me, hi, walk into a classroom. She made a lot of jokes about how much of a weird little mix our group was, but Mrs. Walker overheard this one. I caught her eye, and she was blood red in the face and glaring into my soul from across the classroom. I blush easily and turned bright red, which made my friend notice too. From that day on, I was dirt. It was like a switch flipped. People would literally ask me in the hall if I pissed her off somehow. She'd never give any of the people in my group all of our papers. She'd tell me my answer to a question was wrong. Then, when someone else said exactly what I had said, she'd praise them. It got old pretty fast, so I just started ignoring her and doing my own thing. I still turned in every assignment and had a high score, so I didn't care. We did research papers as part of our final exam. 
She outright refused any help to my Mormon friend, the lesbian, and the black guy. I had written a paper on the merits of Christianity with mental health, which she assigned me, and gotten back into her good graces enough that she'd help if I asked, so they'd send me to ask about their papers. Magically, the things they had asked were suddenly easy to answer when I asked. Towards the end of the assignment, she caught on to what I was doing and lost her shit, screaming. I had had enough and pointed out that she was purposely ignoring them, and she clammed up. My guess is no one had evidence like I did that she was a crusty She sat quietly for the rest of class and let us work. But I had sealed my fate. She lost both my and my best friend's research papers and tried saying we didn't even turn them in. We came at 6 a.m. to turn them in before class, due to us leaving for a sports event that day, and had signed in with the main office. Cameras show us going into her room with our project folders and returning without them, so the principal believed us. She swore it never happened, even with the camera evidence, and my dad eventually had to come and yell because she was threatening me with a zero if I didn't do it over on a new topic by the end of the week. We had six weeks for the original essay which would have stopped me from graduating. She found it in her desk two days later. She never found my friends and input a zero at the end of the week. When my friend's mom saw the grade, she came to the school and helped her look, finding it in a book cabinet inside of a textbook. Mrs. Walker claimed that she had accidentally stuck it there while checking sources and forgot. There is more to Mrs. Walker. Lots of little incidents that prove that none of this was coincidence but my last note will be my final time seeing her. Turns out, Mrs. Walker was in charge of the graduation ceremony for seniors. She gave us a dress code, and I made sure to obey it. There was no rule against collars, so I got a dress with a high collar that actually looked nice with my cap and gown. Just before we walked, she spotted me and yanked me out of line. The lecture she gave me can be summed down to, You're not walking. Go home. You know better than to wear a collared dress. Nothing can show outside of your gown. I pointed out that a lot of girls had jewelry showing, and she turned red and started yelling. As she yelled, a little bubble of outrage formed inside of me. I'm a mouse of a human. I don't do conflict at all, but I was pissed. I slowly, while keeping eye contact, unbuttoned the top of my dress and tucked it down into my gown so nothing showed. She got an eyeful of bra and cleavage and looked away. So I took my cue to walk away and hop back in line. She tried to grab my arm while yelling, and another teacher stepped in to see what the issue was. I explained, talking over her, and he started laughing and said I was fine. She seethed. She's calling names and says mine wrong. I have the most generic American name. Think generic on the name level as Rachel Ann Jones. Literally no difficult spellings. My name is straightforward and easy. I could be a background character in any show. She mispronounced it a different way when she was calling out scholarships. My tiny goth girl blood was boiling. So in broad view of the news cameras, small town, graduation is always on TV here, I flipped her off as we were walking out. A couple others followed suit. Even my Mormon best friend gave her the finger. She looked mortified, and my favorite teacher was dying laughing. It was gold. She retired before the next year for unrelated reasons. Story 1. In high school, they would do trivia questions after the announcement sometimes, and the first teacher who dialed the office with the correct answer would get a prize for the class. My math teacher really wanted to win, and hadn't yet this year. So one fateful morning, the question went out, and we had the answer, so he called in. But we were the second caller. In a fit of pseudo-rage, he yells, Damn it! and kicks this little plastic trash can across the room, where it bonks a kid right in the head. His eyes go wide, and he apologizes and asks if the kid is okay, which he is. Everyone got a good laugh afterwards, including the kid who got hit, and later we would pretend to duck whenever we didn't win the morning trivia contests. Story 2 I had a history teacher in high school who was always stern and serious, which was great since it gave a reverence to what he was teaching about and his unpretentious nature meant he spoke about what was important and interesting. One day, however, his voice broke, and after he cleared his throat, it broke again. He stopped talking, put his hands in his pockets, frowned, and took a few breaths. Students, sorry about this lecture. 
My wife and I just decided to get a divorce. He blankly stared ahead for a second and then walked toward the door, loosening his tie. I need a drink. He exited the door. After a second, he poked his head back in. Of water. I'm coming back. Don't think I've forgotten about Napoleon. Not too much of a meltdown, but he was a pretty manly dude in a nerdy sort of way. Story 3 Our freshman English teacher was a small, soft-spoken woman who was kind of known to be a teacher you could walk all over with little repercussions. We were in a review session after school, and some upperclassmen were just hanging out in the hallways making lots of noise, so she was constantly poking her head out in the hall asking them to be quiet. As we are all very silently reading or something, the classroom door absolutely slammed shut. So hard, the latch didn't have time to catch, and the door bounced back open. The teacher immediately yells, oh hell no, and kicks off her heels and takes off out the door. She caught up with the kid, who had taken a running start and kicked the door shut, and berated him for a good ten minutes, which we could hear clear as day from the end of the hall. It was like nothing we'd ever heard from her. Story 4 I was in a band. One day, one of the regular always-in-trouble disruptive students was being extra disruptive while the director was trying to tell us something important. So after about five different times of going the normal route to get him to settle down, he cracked. It got quiet, and then the director bellowed, William, are you stupid or just don't give a crap? The whole room was quiet. All eyes were now on the disruptive kid who was then trying to hide behind his tuba. Then, the director continued with his announcement like nothing happened. Story 5 My super dorky history teacher in 8th grade was the nicest teacher I've ever met. But there were a couple class clowns in our class, and he usually dealt with them okay. One day, though, they were obnoxious to the entire class from the moment he walked in, and he snapped, yelling and chucking his stapler across the room. He nailed a staple right into Ben Franklin's forehead. He immediately apologized and went about his day normally, while all the students went silent. Nobody ever bothered him again after that day. Story 6 A Spanish teacher I had in high school ended up having a meltdown on the day of the final exam. The whole semester, my class had been pretty chatty, but really nothing that out of the ordinary. On the day of the final, there was an event that set her off. If I remember correctly, he was talking during the exam. His cell phone may have gone off instead. It's been a while. She proceeded to attempt to pick up the desk with a 17-year-old sitting in it and slam it on the ground. The kid got up, and then she flung the desk along the floor, slamming it against the door, and told him to finish his exam outside. Then she proceeded to tell the rest of us what terrible people and students we were. She also told us that she had gained 20 pounds over the course of the semester because of how bad our class was. Then she felt the need to tell us about how she'd been raped as she broke down sobbing. After that, I just did my best to finish my exam as quickly as possible so that I could go home, as that was my last class of the year before summer. Story 7 Junior year of high school, I decided to take a psychology class. The administration switched a lot of teachers around that year and hired a lot of new ones too, so I didn't know anything about him. As the semester goes on, his behavior starts slipping, and the class starts noticing. He begins to lose his patience more and more frequently when the class doesn't respond to a question immediately. His behavior then progressed to him throwing whiteboard markers at students for not paying attention or answering incorrectly. Then one day, about half the way into the semester, he completely loses it. A group of three students laughed at something within their own conversation just as class was starting, and our teacher saw and made a comment to the class that if we weren't going to listen, he would make today hell. Some kids spoke up, saying he would go to the principal if he did anything to hurt the class. So the teacher began throwing markers, erasers, anything he could find at the student. The student got up to leave for the principals, and the teacher stood up on his desk and screamed at us. He ran to the front of the classroom, where the student who spoke out was, picked up a desk and threw it at the student. Thankfully, it didn't hit him, but the teacher ran to the door to prevent anyone from leaving and said if anyone said anything about that day to anyone, he would ruin their lives. Some friends and I told the principal and administration, and I actually had to go into court to testify. Turns out, the guy suffers from schizophrenia as well as some degree of PTSD after serving in the military. I don't remember what ended up happening with him. At the time, I really didn't care to know. Bummer.
I really wanted to hear this end with something like, at the end of the semester he tied his erratic behavior to a lesson plan. Some kind of dead poet society or something. We had a physics teacher in 11th grade that fake reversed graded the first big exam. All the smart kids did bad, didn't understand why, and the couple broke down. He quickly blended that into the next lesson and handed out the proper grades at the end of the class. Was a total mind F. Story 8. Junior year in university, my genetics professor was in the middle of a lecture when authorities took him out of the auditorium, thank goodness, and informed him that his wife, the dean of our college, had been struck and killed by a motor vehicle that morning. He retreated to his office and proceeded to tear the place apart like a tornado had gone through it. He ripped the top of his desk off its frame, pulled down all of his bookcases, books, pages, papers, all sorts of documents and furniture strewn everywhere in pieces. By the time I graduated, he still wasn't the same man as he was before that awful day. Story 9. This was in high school. We had a band teacher. His nickname was Pinky because he had very red hair and pale skin with a red tint. Borderline albino. Every time he got mad, his entire face turned tomato red. I don't remember the sequence of events, but he was already frustrated. Everyone in the room knew to shut up so that we didn't piss him off. Well, everyone except this one dippy girl. She asked something along the lines of, Are you mad? And kept pestering him. He finally snapped. His face turned that familiar shade of tomato red, and he threw the pencil he was using to conduct across the room. He then stormed out and slammed the door hard enough that it could be heard on the other side of the building. He quit soon after. Story 10. Year 9 Math Class. Our teacher was sick and an early 20s substitute teacher came in to cover. She was lovely, kind, friendly, although a bit timid and shy. One girl in our class used a fountain pen to flick ink on a shirt she was wearing one day. Poor woman noticed her do it, didn't say a word, and just went to her desk, put her head in her hands, and sobbed. Didn't even move for ten minutes at least. Eventually, a friend of mine went to get another teacher. The sub was escorted out, still crying, and was seen for the rest of the day just crying in her car, not moving for another four or so hours. Story 11. Eighth grade math teacher. He was well known for his short temper, but this particular day was bad. There was a kid in my class, Justin, that never listened and never did his homework. One day, the math teacher just had it with Justin grabbed his desk with him in it and picked it up and slammed it back down on the ground a few times. After that, he shoved the desk with Justin in it across the room. Justin was fine, thankfully, but the math teacher just stormed out. Told my mom, and I guess a few other parents called the school about it too. He was gone for a few weeks and had to take anger management classes. I just went by my old middle school a few weeks ago, and he's the assistant principal now. Who would have expected that? Story 12. In high school, our government teacher freaked out on my class. We had a few talkers in the back corner, but they finally broke him. He flipped his podium lectern over and started screaming at us. He called us the worst group of kids he'd ever had to teach and that he was 110% accurate that we were going to be nothing. He then went to his desk and drank his entire thermos of coffee. A few years later, he was having a retirement party at his house. I was close friends with his son. He revealed that the thermos was 80% vodka and 20% coffee. Story 13. Had a sub in 5th grade. I was a really unorganized kid, and having to dig through my desk for crap wasn't uncommon. Sub went to collect our homework one by one, and I was still digging through, pulling a bunch of stuff out when she got to me. She started towering over me and told me this was unacceptable dumped my desk in front of me and told me I was staying in from recess to organize it. One girl said, you can't make him do that. And the sub raised her voice and spit out, you don't tell me what to do, brat. I can do whatever I want. The whole class revolted and a neighboring teacher came in to see what was up. The sub claimed I was being lippy and this was my punishment. Then the whole class spoke up and informed him of what really happened and we were all let out for recess. Came back in, and a lunch lady was sitting at the teacher's desk instead. As the kid who was always picked on by everyone, it was nice to see the whole class stand up for me that day. Story 14. I taught public high school for seven years and have been teaching in a university ever since. Every time one of these threads pops up, 
I expect to find the story of how I once broke down in tears when a cell phone rang in class, or the time I threw up in a trash can, brushed my teeth with bottled water in front of all 42 students, asked a janitor to come down and take the trash out, and went back to teaching after my favorite student of all time faked barfing noises because he knew it would make me puke. Story 15. My junior year in nursing school, we took a nursing psych class. The professor was not a good teacher, to put it lightly. She regularly would talk about her personal life instead of teaching what was outlined on the syllabus. About halfway through the course, we had our midterm exam, which consisted of about 75% of questions of stuff we had not covered in class. I think the highest grade anyone got was a 65%. The next class, she berated us and told us all we were going to be bad nurses. One of the people in my class wrote a letter to her, saying that she spends most of the classes not teaching the material and it's not justifiable to give us exams if we know more about her personal life than what we are supposed to be taught, citing the syllabus given to us at the beginning of the semester. All of us in the course signed the letter. Next class, she absolutely lost it on us, screaming at us about how disrespectful we are and how we will never amount to anything. This got to the point that the dean of the nursing program heard her from down the hall and had to come remove her from the classroom. Next class, we had another professor for the rest of the semester. The dean told us she was on hiatus and said that we brought up our grievances in a respectful manner and commended us on that. The professor who broke down never came back to teach at the school. Story 16. I was bullied a lot around this time, and I started fighting back against the bullies. The teacher noticed this and thought it'd be a good idea to remove me and who is essentially my arch nemesis from the playground during lunch and make us do crafts in a classroom instead. I think they were trying to make us get along by working together, but that doesn't happen with 11-year-olds. Unsupervised for a whole hour in a locked classroom. She leaves, and when she returns halfway through the hour, the classroom is a mess, chairs strewn everywhere, our school jumpers and shirts are torn. I had a bleeding ear and he had a swollen lip and bruises everywhere. We freeze as soon as she catches us and she just collapses to the ground. She sobbed into her hands. All I wanted was for you to be friends. Was that so much to ask? She wept uncontrollably for the next five minutes. We felt awful about it. We shook hands and tried to clean up the classroom. The next day, we had a substitute teacher who eventually became our permanent one. And he was horrible. I guess it worked though. It's 16 years later and I'm on the way to my enemy's house to drink and play board games. So, yeah. Story 17. My 8th grade algebra teacher, also German teacher, Mr. Cogburn, was an interesting guy. He was tall, had kind of wild looking frizzy gray hair and a beard, and had a sort of boisterous, larger than life kind of personality. He started every single class by slamming the door and yelling. He yelled. Or, as I would realize once I got into theater in high school, he projected, through the entire class period, though he never really came across as intimidating. He always had a yardstick in his hand that he would slap forcefully against the blackboard to emphasize what he was saying. He would also slap it against the desks of students who weren't paying attention. Though he was exceedingly careful to not actually hit the student, it wasn't terribly uncommon for him to break yardsticks, and there was always another one in the supply cabinet to replace the one he'd broken. He had a little song slash chant he made up for remembering the slope-intercept form of an equation for a line that I will probably remember until the day I die. He also gave the most effective, and to 8th graders both hilarious and embarrassing, explanation of how to divide fractions. He stood on a desk and told us, Always divide the top. He pointed at his head. By the bottom. He then turned around and pointed at his own ass. Never divide the bottom because the bottom, here he helpfully gestured up and down the length of his ass, is already divided. That's what Mr. Cogburn was like. He was big and loud and crazy, but not in a scary way. We told new students that the way to tell he was actually mad was if he started the class by shutting the door like a normal person and speaking quietly, and that was when they should be scared. Now we get to the story of the meltdown. Every year, our school did an event called the Mathathon. Students were given math worksheets and tried to solve as many problems as they could in a set amount of time. 
People, usually the parents, would sponsor the students, pledging a certain amount of money for each problem correctly solved. And at the end, the money was donated to a local charity that helps the disabled. It was that time of year, and Mr. Cogburn was explaining the mathathon to my class. And when he got to the part about the charity and what they did, one boy, who probably thought himself incredibly cool and edgy, loudly said, I don't know why anyone bothers to help those tards. We should just let them all die. And Mr. Cogburn transformed. As I said before, dude was tall, well over six feet, but his height never came across as imposing at all. Now, he loomed over that student's desk like the freaking angel of death. He seemed to physically radiate pure rage. I swear to all that's holy, you could feel his outrage coming off of him in waves. Even though he was focused solely on the one boy, students halfway across the room sank down in their chairs in pure terror, trying to disappear under their desks. I know, because I was one of them. We couldn't even look at him, not out of the usual crap he's mad don't make eye contact instinct most people have, but more like it was a form of physical protection. He was a burning sun of anger, and if we looked directly at that sun, it would blind us. He spoke very, very quietly to the boy for about a minute. I didn't make out what he said. Then he led the kid out of the room and shut the door. About a quarter of the class started crying as soon as he left. After a while, the other math teacher came in and taught for the rest of the period. What we all found out later, and which none of us, including that boy, had known, was that Mr. Cogburn's daughter, who he spoke about to us frequently enough, was not his only child. He and his wife had also had a son, a son that was born extremely physically disabled, and who had died at a very young age from health complications arising from those disabilities. When he took that student out of the room, I think we all thought that he was going to kill him. He actually just took him down to the principal and explained what the kid had said, and the kid was suspended for a day. Mr. Cogburn also took the rest of the day off. So that was the biggest meltdown I have ever seen from a teacher, and it was sort of the inverse of a normal meltdown. When he was shouting, gesticulating wildly, and hitting our desks with yardsticks, we loved the guy and feared nothing. But that day when he got so quiet, we felt mortal effing terror.